Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War Ultimate Apocalypse casts this side of East Yorkshire. And today we've got a 3 vs 3 on Bloodshed Alley. Playing on the southern side as the Tyranids, we've got Reaper God 36. We've got Topper playing as the Eldar. I've got Atam playing as the Chaos Space Marines. And on the other side, playing as also the Chaos Space Marines, we've got Imperius Grimaldus. We have got Grid Panther playing as the Pale Guard. And we've also got Guy playing as the Tau Empire. Now, I'm quite excited for this because uh, someone sent this game in and they said I absolutely must cast this because something really epic and unheard of happens in this and I've got no idea what that could possibly be, but, you know, colour me intrigued, colour me excited. Got to make sure that my map awareness for this game is better than the standard, which is, you know, a, a tall order for me, I guess, but I will try my best to see if we can capture the epicness that is said to be happening in this game. So I do also quite like how these guys are red, and these guys are the exact same kind of red up. And the fact that they're also on the same side of the map as well, sir. So that's not going to be confusing from a casting perspective. Not going to be confusing at all. Anyway, so the Eldar and the Imperial Guard are going to be contesting the centre. Neither side should really have too much problems uh, with either people. I mean, I imagine Top is probably going to do a quick attack at Tier 2. There we go. Tier 1 slash 2 even. Going to get those Vipers. Those are Shuriken Cannons. We'll wipe out the Imperial Guard infantry. These guys are then going like, to hide inside their buildings. So no major problems for them if they're able to get the defensive stuff on the front lines there. And, oh, everyone's just taking up into tier things as, as, as quickly as humanly possible. Tau versus the Tyranids over here, though, especially with their Ravenna opening. With all this heavy cover over here, if the Tau go for their ranged units in the other game, they will struggle against the Tyranids over in this side of the stuff. So we've got to keep an eye out for that. Conscripts engaging in mighty close combat and Good lord, those Eldar are quite tall in comparison to these little conscripts. Slicing and dicing away. The mighty Judah esque moves. More Storm Guns will be coming out over here. As the Raveners sliver forward, looking for some blue Smurf people to munch on. We're all being broken on the conscripts, but we've got plenty more guardsmen coming forth. Both the conscripts and the fully qualified variants. These guys are slapping me left, right, and center. Guardians coming over to tie up the proper ones. Got the Commissar in there, though. And that, if anything, will do the majority of damage for the conscripts. Also got the field medics coming over. We saw this in a game a little while ago. I can't remember. In fact, it might have actually been Grid Panther who did this exact style of thing, where he just threw a load of conscripts on the front lines, put those field commanders in there, or those field medics even. Keep them alive and just slow but surely drown the opponent in a mass of human bodies. Not a bad idea, in all fairness. Not a bad idea at all. The raps from Atam in here and Atam, you're on. Get you on this side. So Southern Raptors providing that support. Over here, the Raveners and Elixir moving on over. Pathfinder sprinting away from the Raveners best they can. FCAS build has been slashed all the way down. A bad time for them. Plenty of meat on the table there. Kind of regretting now, as I do with all Ultimate Apocalypse games, I put the graphic settings on high. We'll be all right for now. We won't be all right for much longer if the Flaw Lasagna continues to spawn. Chris Grimalda says, give him mercy. And, oh, can you put people inside the Kaja headquarters? That's interesting. Didn't know you could do that. self team being sliced and poked and prodded. Give him the old bitch slap. He falls down. Look at the breaches there. The breaches will do a mighty fine job at killing any kind of close combat lads. Also, those pathfinders. They'll do terrible range damage, neither. There goes the Lictor. We've got the decaps in there. What be the killing blur, but certainly a nuisance for the Tau. Yeah, I didn't think that the Tau were going to have a great time against Timonids, in all fairness. Look at them. Stabbing in almost unison. Thomas are. I'm like. Just, he's, he's just head and shoulders above everyone else. If you can't fight, wear a big hat. And if you can fight, wear an even bigger hat. Yep, all those dudes are now dead because of the Viper. But Shuriken Cannon. Just that, look at that spread. Probably the fourth time in a row we've seen a Viper go out and kill swaths of infantry, but you're going to love it every time. Remarkably fragile. The glassest of glass cannons the exception of maybe the Dark Eldar's variant of this, what's called the 
Weave the jet bike. This guy's now going to attempt to run away as best they can. But the Viper is a swift mistress. But while the tower is being knocked down, old Topper is going to come in and rub salt in the wound. And everything dies. But they're just going to hide inside the Kadra headquarters. Yeah, broadside battle suit will be able to stand up against the Viper there. When he hunkers down. Little Guardsman with a anti-tank support add-on to their ranks. Would be great if they hit. We just need to hit him. There we go. Doesn't take long. They're dead. Timonid's now bringing forth a couple of Hormogons. Just to continue being a nuisance. Again, these guys will be shot down relatively quickly. But if they could just continue to just perk and prod. Keep that towel down and out. For as long as they can. Not only are they denying the blue economy, but also preventing these plasma generators from getting on the go as well. Breacher's coming out, blowing things up. Broadside Battle Suit, not sure what he's doing. She's having a bad time of it, really. Oh my god, it's nibbling away at Listing First over there. Will be upgraded there. And in a corn versus corn engagement, relatively calm. All considering that these guys want blood for the Blood God. They're just going to chill for now. Leaving the murder and mischief to the teams on the southern flanks. We've got a Rhino for these guys. Are they planning to stick some boys in there and engage in close combat? Can't imagine it when you've got the Havocs. I'm not sure what the purpose of those Havocs are if you're going to go have a Rhino. Unless you're planning to maybe... Stick these guys in there and support somewhere else at the drop of a hat. So I suppose, yeah, that makes sense. A bottle took from a hat, a time even. So yeah, he's he's just, he's just planning to sit here. He's not planning to move any further forward. Defensive corn makes you sick to see, but sometimes the best offense is a good defense, and the southern team are just going to sit pretty on their laurels at the moment. Got a critical location here. Got a critical location here. They don't necessarily need to push out for any more map control. Could do with maybe putting these a little bit further forward just so you can secure your slag deposit here as Imperius Grimaldus already has. The Chimera Assault Tank ready, willing and able. Also, it yet to be finished as another support platform comes on. Now, after quite an explosive opening, relatively calm at the moment. Imperial Guard will spot what the Eldar are up to with their long range scanners. Make us the firepower, but his listing shrines able to slice through Chimera pretty quickly. Webware gets gone down there. So, an even trade. All the same. We'll just simply re replace that. And are you just going to do the same again? I mean, why not? They broke, don't fix it. Have you got a cool symbol on your stuff? Send it! There we go, that's a reference to something. Got more cool banners. Cowabunga, yep, cool, nice one. Send it, that was that was a vine, wasn't it, I think? Well, my friend, you said that a lot a while ago. There we go, it's all happening now. Well, Imperial Guard moving on forward. We've got the Chaos Space Marines also going on top of each other. And it's murder and mayhem on all sides. Just jumping in the middle of all those guys as these... Not sure what their plan is here. They're just... There we go. Bayonet charging the Listing Shrine. Tank. Well, anti-tank missile launchers. Focus firing the support platforms. Not quite sure. How, how is this engagement going on? Explosions everywhere. Havocs. Surrounding the Chaos Lord, battering with the butts of their guns. Raptors didn't seem to do that much in that engagement. Half time attempting to save their Eldar allies. All these conscripts have been turned into mush and paste. Surprising that we're not seeing any more Vipers at the moment. The Vipers would probably still be a viable and pliable solution to this massive infantry. But again, they've, they've got those anti-tank missile launchers, don't they? So maybe that's not the case. I have time to just 
screen these guys away. Got space reads for ATAP. Not feeling it. Not feeling at all against this mass of stuff. They're not going to go for their own Havocs yet. Yeah, we've got the Vipers come back out. How the Tau doing? Are you been feeling better? The Tau are feeling much better. We've even got a second Cadre headquarters. Even more plasma generators. I have Tyrant. A one man army. Practically ignoring all the incoming damage. Here comes the Viper. For everyone focusing on the Hive Tower, it gives them space to fire away all the Havocs firing over the ridge. Viper narrowly surviving. We'll need some repairs in there. Got Space Marines on this side. Well, these guys are now in the heavy cover. Although, I suppose you can actually. Are you, are you all in the heavy cover? Yes, you are. For some reason, my ultimate apocalypse, they, they don't have little heavy cover symbols above their heads. What a brave sergeant. He went in. Died there. Also, cannons. Firing. We also missile launchers on these guys as well. Ghost Lord. Positioning himself forward, but. Won't need to. They outrange this listing post. Nope, they're just going to get involved in anyway. I don't mind a bit of damage. You'll be able to take it on. He says. Tainted all specs. Infiltration detection, should they need it. And here comes the Seer Council. I've seen them many times before, just walk into an engagement. Well, they don't necessarily kill things super duper quick. They don't die neither. They'll just be happy to stay in the middle of the scrum for quite some time. Cultists in the bat lines. With the Chaos Icon Bearer in there as well for health regen. Plenty of plasma guns on the cuts on the bat lines. They're also... Have you been infiltrated? I've been infiltrated. And that is the one way to take on heavy armour, or heavy infantry even. I see a council on their commander armour, so they don't mind. They're focusing on the Chaos Rhino. When a new one is about to spawn. So because they're engaging this, and not tying up all this stuff, I was taking a lot more damage than it would usually do. The warp spiders. These guys are all sitting in heavy cover as well. They're not falling down nearly as quickly as they would normally do. But triple warp spiders should, in theory, do the job. He says, "The miles be broken." One of them. Here goes the viper for some support. Smoke grenades on over here. Further reducing the incoming damage. We're all being broken across the line there. See, so it comes engaging in range combat. Yeah, not being as useful. As we've seen them in the past. Of the concave. But mini explosion going on here. Causing the warp spiders to feel really sad. On the outside and in on the in. Where is that where's that fire coming from? Is there like some artillery coming in? Oh, it's just Maybe it's grenades. Who knows? Oh well the warp spiders, the shadow look there, the Imperial Guard decided, you know what, no, we're just gonna use smoke. They've also put their little um, sand pits down. Well, sand pits, sand bags even. Which also increased their range damage reduction. Really difficult to push the Impale Guard off position if they don't want to leave. Timonids, they've been chilling out for quite some time, actually. Let's have a look at the economies really, really quickly. We've got 138 and 115, 254 and 212, and 122 and 60. Compared to 237 and 133, 210 and 199, and 198 and 159. So the Tau really actually coming back. We've got the Skyray missile gunships ready and raring to go. Quite long ranged are those guys. Yeah, the only one really low on the economy major at the moment is A Town at the moment. You needed fire support. Keeper God with the Hive Tyrant. Fully upgraded by the looks of things. But even a Hive Tyrant of that report struggle staying alive. Lots of Warp Spiders are coming as the fire was directed onto him. And now here comes Air Tam's Havoc Marines as well. Warp Spiders repositioning. The far flung side of things. Flank and maneuver. If I've ever seen one, Cultist all been. 
quickly brought down. That's a lot of plasma guns being lost in this engagement here. And the Chaos Spaceman has been really thoroughly backed into a corner. Got to fall back a little bit here. Beautiful manoeuvrings from those warp spiders. Skyway missile gunships there. They can certainly do a lot of damage to these clumped up infantry units. Here the also pushing down in the centre, but the Timonids are in a position where they can be a little bit of a defensive ally there. The spiders have got no jumping juice left, so they will fall back, although they've done their damage. Not much damage against these Chaos Dreadnoughts at the moment, though. Also cannons and, yes, yeah, start cannons for these guys. Oh, no, you've got the Havoc Marines on the back lines with missile launchers. So one Dreadnought has gone down. Dreadnoughts have not moved forward at all. And slowly but surely, Air Time is bringing up those Marines. He's also got his own Chaos Dreadnought in the ranks. Someone needs to take care of these missile gunships. If it's possible, here comes a teleport from the Autark. Double teleport, in fact. Going for a fusion blaster. And in no time flat, bringing down one Skyrim missile gunship. Can he get another one? Don't think he'll be able to... Oh, no, he might be able to... Oh, no, never mind. He floats on the way. Either way, forcing it to move means it's not firing. Air Time's Chaos Marines are just rolling on over. But maybe going a bit too far forward. Here comes all the bloofers and right smack bang in the middle. Those Chaos Space Marines. Thankfully they're wearing the heavy cover. It's not taking too much damage, but still damage that they could have... Well, they probably wanted to avoid. And with so much fighting going on... The battle lines haven't changed all that much. Eldar now in the middle. Or should I say the Gene Steelers decapping and recapping that critical location. Southern Chaos Space Marines managing to retake their critical location. It looks like they might be pushed backwards from this Chaos Predator. Bill Guard might come in for some spotting fire there. a long line of engagements going on. War Spiders taking care of the Imperial Guard. They've got no heavy cover now, so they will go down significantly quicker than the guys before. Al Smith also in there for some reason. XV-88 broadside battle suit. Another target. The Breachers going down these Warp Spiders once they are in motion. And there's actually now four squads of them. Skyline Missile Gunship firing on its own position. Good chunk of damage on some of these warp spiders, but not enough to save his com comrade. Combination of Imperial Guard and Chaos Space Marines moving the Southern Marines back. And they've done the damage, but with these field commands on the go, they do not have a cat in hell's chance of occupying this central point here. They need something a lot more substantial to take care of that field command. And the second one is on the way as well. It would be very, very difficult for the Southern team to make a shift on in that centre. Might even be an idea just to build a field command here and here as well, just for the good times. It would certainly help secure out any pushes. What's going on instead, then? We're going to go for tier 4 slash 5. Eldar, you're invisible. Hold on. We are what kind of tiers damage. are you working with? Can't rightly tell at the moment. You've done a few shots trying to wail in Doom, so what is it? That's about 3 slash 4, something like that. Not too far behind, I have to say. Love the line of web where it gets. Not sure what this is meant to achieve, but. The great enemy. Aesthetically pleasing, all the same. All time attempting to get some sneaky base harassment. He could have probably, actually. It have been really good to see him come over here. And, I mean, yeah, because it's all a nice, lovely circle. Kill a couple of these, chain reaction, all these die. Shield generator that will protect the, craft the plasma generators. Are we seeing plenty of... Yeah, we're seeing a couple of industry the commands. Ever expanding the Imperial Guard's economy. Don't know if... I can't... For life me, I can't remember if the Chaos Space Marines have got that kind of building which just 
Greece Star Company. I don't think they do. I think it's Imperial Guard. I know that Space Marines have got one. Something like that. Oh, wait, Gene, see, there's a couple of skirmishes with these Imperial Constructs, or Conscripts, even. I have a talent standing side by side with the support platform Uber Turret. Not sure how frequently used the word Uber is in the Eldar lexicon. Don't imagine many Germans living on an Eldar craft world. After all, I mean, probably have speed limits on their roads in the craft worlds. It's not a very German thing to do. Conscript's been utterly murdered by all these guys. Sad state of affairs. One guy lives. Hold the line! Well, the line was not held. Not held at all. But he tried, gosh darn it. And that's the main thing. There's big explosions. How much damage does it do? Barely anything. That heavy cover really working for him. This guy's just throwing up a stun grenade that way. Our frustration. Also, Lictor's getting some vision in there. But yeah, by the time the fog of war off, yeah, that, that, that critical location and the Lictors being able to spot all this stuff over here. Whereas compared to that, what, are these, what could these guys see? Not nearly as much. So while the... Just to double check, now I'm not talking out the backside. Now, while these guys can see all their positions, it's not the same for the Northern team. And they do say that half the battle is in the knowing. Moralda Vigilant getting some scouting information there. But just realising, oh shit, there's lots of infiltrated buildings that are firing at me. Can't see them, don't like it. But do know that the warp spiders are there, so we are seeing the Skyrim missile gunship throwing a load of bombs. XV9 hazard suit. A trio of them, soon to be. And at the moment, one thing I'm quite scared for for the Northern team is that the Tyranids have not been bothered at all. No one's been taking care of their reclamation pools. And the longer a game goes on, the happier a Tyranid player is. You just know eventually, at some point, that Swarm Lord will come out. And when the Swarm Lord comes out, well, it's basically a gradual GG. Unless he can negate the opponent's teammates. But even then, one Swarm Lord can take on several armies at once. Huge explosions from the Uber platform. That's been spotted, but I don't think that these conscripts are going to do much against it. It is a building. It is in heavy cover. And it has a huge blast radius going on there. Chaos Disco for vision's sake. That's just a sad time all around. Cassicans there being brave. One shot. Two shots. And they're dead. One Cascan surviving, but getting a hole. Explosion right in the face. If the hazard suits can do something about it. I do quite like how when the fire it looks like the recoil on the gun is so excessive. You can barely hold on to it. And here comes the death get. Oh, oh. oh just look up there. The cough lingers, the cough continues. Conscripts are just dear, oh dear. I think in this particular area, we've seen more conscripts die than ever before. Actually, no, that's a lie. A little while ago, there was a game on this map. We saw a conscript charge, and that was quite epic. Lots of conscripts died that day. But yeah, Imperial Guard are dead. Raveners, or oh, sorry, Gene Sealers even, will move a little bit forward. See an ion cannon being placed on the front lines here. I don't know if that's the place to put it. I suppose, where else do you put it? Cardio headquarters. Card yeah, maybe Cardio headquarters here might be a little bit better. But actually, no, it's a quite a big building, so you might not be able to fit that in there. Fair enough. I mean, it'll look cool on the front of the base, won't it? And the rule of cool means that that is what you should do. It will now spot that ion cannon. They will know that they need to sort that out ASAP. Huge explosions all the way through onto the warp spiders, but... They are only heavy infantry. They can't take a beating. 
Earth Shaker platform is firing in as well. Need something melee orientated really to keep these guys from firing that stuff. Iron Clown has been finished up. Needs to be researched to be able to be in full effect there. Once it's done, continuous fire all over the map. Also bring down big booms as well. We are just seeing Imperius Grimaldus just chilling out over here. Enjoying his time around that critical location. With an ancient Wraith Lord. And the Capillary Tower looking for a big Tyranid super weapon. So it looks like we're going into the nukes, boys and girls. No one willing to push through anyone's front lines. They are too well defended. So it's a case of just who can nuke the opponents the most. Grimaldus says push. But is it wise to push when our ancient rifle is utterly charging right in front of you? Give me the old backhand. And he's not dying anytime soon. But here comes quadruple Lehman Rush Demolishers. Lehman Rush Demolishers, even. And fighting on all sides. Tower from the distance. Moving a bit forward. Got the Bane Blade, or the Storm Blade in here as well. Demolishers have been brought down quite quickly, but... In the fact, they've been brought down quite quickly and they haven't really done that much damage to the Havoc Marines. They've broken the morale, but... That's about it, really. What about you guys over here? You are... Doing all right against the Eldar. Still can't see all this infiltrated nonsense. We'll reposition on this side. Now you have got your something pinged. I, can't, I, I, I remember someone in the comments a while ago. I do apologize. I can't remember your name. But someone said that when someone builds up a super weapon and then a second person builds up a super weapon, the ping is like somewhere in the middle between those two structures for whatever reason. I don't know why. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but... So other things have been built up. That's what I know at the moment. And that push didn't work. Good idea. A mighty armoured fist punching through the defences, but not quite doing the job. The two capillary towers now for double the nukes. I mean, which base would you nuke at this point? Suppose you want to go for the tower because they've got their shield generators. Might be the Imperial Guard, but in saying that, their buildings are quite strong. We'll do... Still probably kill most things, but... A lot more would also survive. Probably the Chaos Space Marines, that'd be the target. Gotta make sure that we don't miss out on anything. So easy to miss out on... Stuff. When the map is this wide, or sorry, this long. Never map, but long. Stormblade is going to die. That is a sad place for him to be. He's killed carelessly. Or was he just there to hold him off? Just to be a bit of a nuisance. Probably. Rayflod really getting those steps in. He's been appearing in every lane so far. But late game Tau, it's all about those hazard suits. As many of them as he can. We can move as a group. It's like a zone for a ball, but more mobile, I guess. Nearly finished with those super weapons. How about you, Mr. Talman? Oh, that, I suppose, yeah, because uh, in Ultimate Apocalypse, if you've got generators around your buildings, it helps them with the research, increases it quite dramatically. There's no plasma generators around it, so it will be quite a slow research speed. Demon Russ is not really doing all that good, are they? But I do believe now you've got your... Who are you? Hold on. You are... Oh, it's regular Chaos Space Marines. Why are you infiltrated and you're not? Oh, because you're Havoc. Right, okay. Ignore me then. Ignore me entirely. Oh, time just standing around, minding his own business. Plenty more plasma generators on the go. Oh, the Eldar. Let's stick him... So close to get on the front lines. Odd, interesting choice. 
do have what's been researched over here. Damn is this Where is our tier 4-5? slash One Dreadnought and a couple of boys standing up against all these Chaos Space Marines. I suppose these guys are coming in on their own and not being spotted by these lads. Unless they're just sending them into the meat grinder just so they can have... Oh, what you call it? The... Just like the squad cap being reduced. There's the heavy support portal for the Eldar. The blue tower being finished. And... Oh, about to get that... Never mind the predictions I made earlier on. The Eldar super weapon. Didn't know that the Eldar had a super weapon. Where did the Eldar super weapon come from? Hold on, it's all invisible, that's why. Where, oh, it's here, the Eldritch Spire. Right, okay, ignore me. Ignore me. But, I mean, like I said, the shield generators really paying off here. I mean, the plasma generators haven't survived. Seems that everything else is doing relatively okay. All things considered. We also got a couple of nuclear weapon sensors for Grid Panther. Yeah, quiet storm. Oh, so I zoomed out too much. Okay, never mind, mate. Almost serene, almost calm. Quite perturbing when you think about it. Yeah, not the target I would have gone for. Not the target I expected. Second super weapon been finished for Reaper God. So is it going to go for the double tap? These guys have been hit. But I can't imagine people wanting to hit them again. Oh, that's been, oh right, so that's kind of like worked against them, really, because now they've killed all the plasma generators, so what guy is going to do is just build all his plasma generators around the iron cannon. That's literally the entire iron cannon being surrounded completely. Okay, alright, fair enough. A bit risky though, because if these guys blow up, then it will do damage to the iron cannon itself, but you know what? I like it. That's a cool thing to do, my dude. Or my guy, I suppose. If you want to be canonical with the names. I've time just chilling out over here. Seems it's a case of just throwing nukes at everyone until someone is weakened. It becomes a... Good lord, the speed on that guy. Where is he running off to? Just stare at the floors on you, apparently. Why are you moving that fast? Here he comes. Just getting some vision. Same with the... In fairness down here. With that vision, what do they intend to do? Ancient Wraith Lord, quite a tanky boy. And well, I mean, you know, old people tend to move a bit slow, but no, that guy is just... Well, he's like Usain Bolt. Maybe even a little bit faster. There's a whole smorgasbord of pink stuff. The thousands, or the Rubik Marines, working in tandem with the corn dudes. An unlikely match. A match nonetheless. I suppose I keep on looking here from this perspective, but there's also a potential for nukes dropping here. I do apologise for the state of the frame rate going on now. There we go, the iron cannon's been finished. And so a slow destruction for the Eldar stuff in the middle. And that's so much stuff to potentially lose. Looking for the destruction stone add-on for more storms. The Eldar definitely need to move on over and take care of the iron cannon. ASAP, really. Reaper God is saying it's gearing up so they can pick up an engagement. An engagement, you say. What kind of engagement we're thinking of? Explosions going on down here. They've seen the plasma generators. I'll be a thing that they're aiming for. Unsure at the moment. Yeah, so at this point, I'm now regretting the lack of frame rate. It's a big storm. Causing all sorts of issues for the Chaos Space Marines. Yeah, but picking an engagement, it's going to be hard. Ideally, you want to just 
mass all your boys go down the middle. But those field commands are going to cause you some issues. Here comes some warp storm nonsense. A pillar of the world end by Pyrrhus Grimaldus. And a whole smorgasbord of pink horrors are on the way out to come and play. They'll be cutting through the armour of the buildings pretty sharply. Rift Lord's getting ready to come on over. And these are ancient Rift Guard, actually. I mean, look at the level of damage that they do. The great field up. He's just taking it on the chin. He's like, come out as you bastards. I'll sort you out. But a blast from the Uber turret has killed him off. Next V89 commander on the way. They'll be trying to do what they can. But this pillar of the world really dampening Airtam style. He does not want this amount of pink cores in, in this side of the, of, of the stuff. So the map even. Now where's it come up correctly? Oh, we got more storms. Who are you getting this time? You are getting... Oh, I feel like I played black and white there for a second. If anyone remembers that game. Yeah, well, they're focusing on the middle. And are they going to take out the nuclear weapon centers? These don't have the benefit of being protected by any shield generators. They're also over here blasting apart the plasma generators. And has, has the Elder used his peace time? Yep, he's used his peace ability. So no one's allowed to fight for a little while. That does mean that the pink cores are just going to sit here. Really chill. Now, is someone going to come over and help him? Anyone at all? We've got some gene sealers here. We've got some Ogrins. Some grid oh, grid pan for Ogrin. He's just... How do you guys get down here? I assume that means they're going to set up for some big explosion stuff. We have got corn terminus. 17 of them, actually. They're all forward. What kind of conversation would a Corn Terminator have with a Carnifex while they're in peace mode? There we go. Back to normal. I do love that. <laughs> There's nothing I find more entertaining. Good the Ogre's just looking to bash buildings. No chill. Ion Cannon firing away out of the Capillary Towers, but the turrets have been spreading out all over the place. Doing what they can. Soon the Iron Cannon, I imagine, will be blitzed open. Being slapped around by the bodyguards. At least just keeping them occupied. Good lord. That Iron Cannon got some serious health on it. Was expecting it to survive for that long. More exploded things going on. Our space have lost their side of the map. Huge horror ball. Timonids starting to spaff all over Grimaldus' base. It's just explosions everywhere across the map. Cassicans and the Chaos Space Marines finishing off the Southern Chaos player. And it just looks like a golden shower appearing all over this place. Oh, it's the High Fleet, right? So they're just spawning in a million things on the go. It's kind of like the... Well, it's kind of like the... What should we call them? It's the Tyranid equivalent of the Pillar of the World or whatever. They can summon people as well. But while that's going on, there's also a nuclear bomb going on over on the Eldar stuff. So that's cool. A million things happening at once. Look at this map awareness. Not missed a single thing yet. He thinks. Ancient Rift Guard over here have not finished off the Iron Cannon. No, no, we're close. No, we're close at all. Some rude words coming in from Grimaldus. As they slowly whittle down the Hive Tyrant. Who are you fighting against at the moment? Get our saucer go toe-to-toe with him. But 
awesome D cannons throwing in whatever they can. Also got the Timonids using another new curve on this side. I've killed a lot of Imperial Guard stuff. It's still all up in the air at the moment, to be fair. Still quite all up in the air. Mind you, the Timonid stuff has kind of faded away. There's no more pillar. Or hive mind, even, to bring the lads down. But the pillar of the, of the weld end still knocking around. I don't know if that's a permanent fixture or lasts for only a limited amount of time. And the southern team are a bit shafted, aren't they? They've lost a player, they've lost a lot of resources, and they have not taken care of the iron cannon. Well, mind you, there are plenty of capillary towers left over from that Tyranid bombing. At least going to distract this guy, these guys for a little while. Look at how many Earth Shaker platforms there are. Imperial Guard were just saying, right, this center is mine, and mine alone. Oh, bloody hell, I missed that. Ha-ha! You know how I said earlier on about the, the map awareness? Well, we got, the, we got the back end, didn't we? That's something. Look at the smirk. The ruins. The distant howls of tyrannized creatures. Mind you, a lot of these structures still alive and kicking. Pillar itself still quite healthy. Tower now finally moving outside the base. After taking care of those ancient Wraith Lords. And here comes a what are you? You are a Riptide Titan. Not as big as the other Titans we've seen on the channel so far, but. Doing the job, gosh darn it. Got the firepower necessary. Eldar being on the brunt of all this incoming damage. Corn Terminators still online. In the distance, we see a. Whatever you're called. A Chaosy Titan thingy over there. Tide jumps on the side. They've been fired up by a lot of these bioplasma turrets. Imperial Guard throw down an orbital laser. And it's now just a game of extermination. The Eldar can't hold them off. Tyranids have lost their main HQ. Eldar dead. And so too will the Tyranids soon. Can't imagine them being able to do any cheeky tricks, pulling anything back. Okay, yeah, that, that was it. That was quite cool. A, a good early engagement where there was lots of back and forth trying to get the positions all sorted out. Where no one team really uh, got any kind of like major land control. Everyone just kind of like hunkered down. And it was kind of like an exchange of missile fire. Or more, more like a cold war, really. Until eventually, these guys were able to start pushing on down once they got those openings for those super weapons and stuff. Very nice stuff. Very nice stuff indeed. Also like how Morales was very consistent and went for corn all the way through. With his colour scheme. Mighty fine thing to see. So yeah, cool. Nice one. Uh, so cheers, boys, for sending that game into Discord. One spot channel. Have a look at the old Patreon. One pound a month gets you once a game a week. And there is also a Discord where Discord things happen. Links in the description as always. As we miss Landshark, pleasure is always never short. Now, see you in a bit. Peace.